It's on the agenda. That's one of the things on the agenda. <laughs> Right after the Pledge of Allegiance. We do have uh, two excuses to absences. One of the Senator Barney is uh, recovering from the Ivan Street. And uh, Representative Johnson is walking to the Oh, and uh, Representative Carter. Sorry, he was one of them. Okay. Excuse the um, Representative Howard. Present. Representative Aldrich. Here. Representative Dean. Here. Representative Boyce. Present. Representative Harvey Blair. Here. Representative Blank. Here. Representative Littlefield. Here. Representative Matthew. Representative O'Hara. Here. Okay. Present. Silver? Here. Terry? Here. Representative Barney? Excuse me, sorry. Uh, Representative Comfort here? Chair. I am present. Okay. So we have. Please speak absence. Absence is one of them. All right, we have a quorum. And then uh, we have adopted Robert's rules. And the next thing would be to adopt the agenda for tonight. I'm going to ask uh, Representative Terry to uh, give us an explanation. Tell me how to add minutes to the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and uh, colleagues. I guess I'm the resident expert now on Roberts, although my wife gave me a book indicating that I am uh, the resident idiot when it comes to Roberts rules. <laughs> Let me be as, uh, as simple as I, I, I hope I can be at this point. At the point uh, where we're considering a proposed agenda, any member has the opportunity to request that an item be placed on the agenda. The item can be placed on the agenda um, without objection, or if there is objection, then a majority vote would be needed in order to place the item on the agenda. Once we have dispensed with any requests to add items to the agenda, and we vote to adopt the agenda, that becomes the agenda for the meeting. If any member wishes to add anything later on to the agenda, it would take a two thirds vote in order to be able to do so. Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much, uh, Representative Troy. <laughs> John, 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 John. He's not here. Can I move to add minutes to our agenda? Approval minutes. Without objection? So moved. Thank you. I'd like to. Uh, Add my petition under the business. Yes, sir. Without objection. So moved. Further amendments? Mr. Jack. Are uh, we going to be discussing this, which was put on everyone's group, under appropriate funds for legal defense, or should we put the Belmont no, County? I, I move we add the Belmont County petition for discussion under new, new, new minutes. Correct. New business. New business. New business. Yes. I approve that. Without objection, that is the new business. Further amendments? I uh, move that we adopt the uh, amended agenda. It's not amended. It's, it's proposed now. Proposed. Day. I'll second that. Join the meeting. Without objection. I'll second that. Okay, so moved. You have to vote. Uh, we got to vote. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those say no. Done. The ayes have it. The agenda is adopted. We will now move on to the supplemental appropriation and open the public hearing. Um, you have uh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> 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 we have the uh, minutes from April 12th. 
So move, Mr. Chair, as written and presented. Second. Moved and seconded. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, nay. And record two. All right. Now we'll open the public hearing on supplemental appropriation of Massachusetts. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good evening, Representatives. Nice to see you. So, on the agenda, you know, we have two primary items. Um, the first is a request of an appropriation amount to Gunstock for $1.3 million to pay the parking lot. This has been an ongoing effort on the part of the County Board of Commissioners as well as the Gunstock Area Commissioners. Uh, the Board of Commissioners is gratified to see that. Uh, the Gunstock Area Commissioners voted unanimously to support this request and to approve this request from their side of it, that this would be money well spent for Gunstock for this significant uh, improvement. I want to especially thank uh, Commissioner Strang for uh, getting up to speed on it very quickly, uh, the size and scope of this project, what it would entail for Gunstock and what it would represent in improvements and also uh, again thanks to Commissioner Strain for uh, generating unanimous support. Uh, this was approved by nothing by the GAC. Um, initially we tried to get this project done a few years ago in the legislature and at the time the figures we were looking at were around around eight hundred thousand um, dollars. Obviously since asphalt this petroleum-based product, uh, it's going to come in at somewhat north of that. To what extent, we don't know. President Day from Gunstock will be soliciting RFPs and will apprise the Board of Commissioners and the delegation and the GAC on um, what those numbers are. But it is our hope and expectation that this appropriation amount of 1.3 million for Gunstock would encompass most, if not all, of the project. It should be noted that um, right now that is a dirt parking on lot, and so it is it is permeable. So drainage is not an issue. Going from a permeable to an impermeable surface um, could create some engineering problems. But it's been explained to me by members of the GAC and President Bay at Gunstock and Pat McGonigal that these are manageable obstacles. Uh, the second request. Uh, of appropriation is for the skylights at the nursing home. Uh, initially, um, we thought that this project could be done for somewhat less than $200,000. Uh, the county administrator solicited two bids. Um, the higher bid was $480,000. The lower bid was... We anticipated this being a little bit more. The bid came in at 481. What was the first bid? Oh, yeah, it was considerably less. It was supposed to be close to $200,000. Right. So uh, the county administrator did solicit, she was able to get two bids for this project. And uh, one was for just under $200,000, the other was for more than double that at 481. When she inquired as to the significant discrepancy, it came to her attention, Board of Commissioners, that uh, the, the lower bid was incomplete. It did not encompass the scope of the work and the requirements to get the job done. So the company that did bid the $491,000 uh, did bid the entire job. They did bid it to code. Uh, with the completion date that was acceptable to the, the county, the county administrator, and the board of commissioners. So uh, none of us here from the county side are happy about the difference in price, and we're not especially happy at that number, but it is an improvement that must be done for the nursing home. And there's no sense in trying to wait. We, we tried to find a third company to come out and bid. We were unable to. Uh, but like most of the other biddings that are going out there for different, different departments with the ARP funds, uh, the prices go up almost overnight from day to day. So we feel it's important now to support these two appropriation requests. 
um, in particular, the, the skylight work for the nursing home. I think the child or Harrow was first. Um, I have no issue with the nursing home. I just want to know how how will us appropriating the money to gun stop benefit all of our taxpayers using our funds? Thank you for the question, Representative Mohara. As, as I've stated previously, that gun stop for, for generations has been the tourist magnet for the Lakes region. And uh, that equation has not changed since 1959 and probably beforehand. And 80% of revenue in the Lakes region is tourism based. And as you know, there is a, a master plan that has been submitted by the Gunstock Area Commissioners. Uh, and it appears that at some point they'll be able to advance on this plan and it will be self funding. Uh, the parking lot improvement is really a, a linchpin that will jumpstart this master plan and the overall improvements of the gun stock experience. Quick follow up. Will the money be earmarked? The, the money will be based on what President Day returns to us for quotes on his RFPs. We expect to see three RFPs. And again, it's possible that the lowest of the three may still exceed the $1.3 million appropriation, but we're confident that gun stock has the resources and will and we'll spend those resources accordingly to complete the project in a timely fashion. So this money will have absolutely no impact to that space. Uh, thank you for the question, Representative Boards. Uh, no, it will not, because this is this is our funding. This these are federal dollars. Correct. I just wanted to make that clear. Thank you. Representative Mackey, then Representative Ryan. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Uh, thank you for my question. Um, I guess I'm somewhat surprised to have Gunstock asking accounting for money. We've been hearing for months on how well Gunstock is doing, making money, and how they're independent they are from the county, and they don't cost the county any money. And suddenly we're, they're asking for 1.3 million from us. I realize this is federal money, but it is federal money that could be spent in other ways in the county, nursing home, being prime example of where else I think it could be better spent. I appreciate you opinion on that. I just want to be clear that the 1.3 in the uh, well, first off, if for some reason we're actually getting out under 1.3, would that money be returned to the county? I would anticipate that it is, in fact, Representative Lane, thank you for the question. Uh, if the bid came out to 1.1 million, then I, my guess is that the Board of Commissioners would authorize the county administrator to cut a check for 1.1 for the, for the precise amount of the budget. Oh. Follow up. Actually, two follow-ups. So again, it's a not to exceed number. The maximum exposure for our for funds is 1.3. It becomes 1.5. They're going to find 200,000 to make the project work. So our exposure is 1.3 at the max, and potentially be less depending on how the bid goes. Hopefully, I wouldn't anticipate that it's always possible. Yes, you are correct. And is that the same for the nursing home? Uh, the maximum exposure we have is 481,000. Uh, dollars of, of which we already appropriated three hundred thousand of that. That is correct, representing That is a fixed number. Thank you. No further questions. Thank you, uh, thank you Mr. Chairman. Uh, I, as you know, and I will inform the delegation, I prepared a series of questions which I had shared with you in advance of the meeting, and had received uh, permission to go through these questions. So I don't have to keep asking follow up. And I thank you uh, for that. Uh, Commissioner Spanos, uh, Commissioner Waring, uh, thank you for um, your uh, being here tonight and for this uh, the consideration of this request. Uh, it sounds to me, uh, my first question is who originally initiated the request to the county commissioners for ARPA funding for repaving of the Gunstock parking area? It sounds to me as though you, you've answered that question by indicating that you approached Gunstock Area Commission commissioners, and they agreed unanimously to receive $1.3 million that you offered them. Is that correct? Rather that, than them coming and asking for the money? That is correct. But again, I, I there are members on this delegation. Yes, there's a history. That, that, that I have a legislative history of some of the folks here sure. from, from, I believe, 2018 or 2019 when we tried to get this done legislatively. Fine. Yeah, yeah, this, is for, this is for informational purposes okay, so sure. that that all of us can understand in the public. It's, it's not meant to be uh, adversarial or- Oh, I, I understand. All right. So 
uh, because you've made this offer to the Gunstock Area Commission, uh, what criteria and process are you able to share with us that you utilize in order to pri uh, prioritize this particular project to receive ARPA funds? My recollection is at an earlier meeting, you indicated that you did not have any plans for the use of ARPA funds at that time. So something has happened subsequently. And how is it that uh, the Gunstock uh, parking lot has gone to the top of your list, so to speak? I wouldn't say it's at the top of the list. We have, um, we have a, a very long list, wish list um, from various constituents, organizations, yes. agencies. Um, we, the Board of Commissioners, are prioritizing Gunstock because of its, of its value and importance uh, to the county. Um, how did you arrive at $1.3 million to be offered? Good question, and thank you for asking. Uh, again, initially, uh, four years ago, the estimate for this improvement was around 800000 Obviously, we're in a whole new world now. But apart from that, that was to encompass uh, the installation of air conditioning in the launch, so they could do functions in the summertime. And Gunstock fortunately bid on that and got the equipment uh, before there was really a spike in HVAC equipment. And they were able to complete or get that project. It should be completed for around $225,000. So in speaking with some of the area commissioners and, and Tom Bay and Kathy White, we determined that they could carry and manage the expense for the lodge because probably the full 1.3 that was going to be appropriated to the two projects would have to be would have to encumber just the parking lot owing to rising costs for that project. Thanks. Let, let's just say hypothetically that the engineering study and the, the, the paving bids come in higher than 1.3 million dollars. Have you as commissioners discussed what you might do in that eventuality and how much you might be able or willing to uh, you're prepared to be able to offer so that gun stock does not have to utilize its own funds but does to utilize ARPA funds or have you uh, informally or formally decided that 1.3 million is your cap? I, I think it's the sentiment and the unanimous sentiment for commissioners that this is an appropriate and generous offer to gun stock and that gun stock does have the means based on the success of the last few seasons to carry any own bridge. And it's your understanding that they'll actually be fitting out uh, for the uh, for this project. Yes, that's something that Commissioner Waring they, insisted on. They made we that commitment. Okay. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Spanos, Commissioner Waring. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Representative Dean is next, followed by Representative Tim Aldridge. Well, I, I have a question of the chair first, and then a question of the commissioners. Are these two items going to be uh, dealt with? As a package deal, or are they going to be separated? Yeah, that will depend on the motion that is made. And then uh, my, my question of the commissioners wouldn't it make more business sense to uh, to put the money to 1.3 million towards replacing uh, one of the existing lists that would get the skiers to the top of the mountain so there'd be more actual skiing done? I, I think for it to be that that's something that Gunstock will be looking at in the next few seasons. And I think that if they continue on the trajectory of success and profit that they have been thus far over the last few seasons, I think they'll be in a very strong position to make those improvements. So you think that they would make more business sense to do one of them first before the as, as someone who likes spring skiing, I think that uh, the prospect of, of they're no longer being a buddy. A uh, parking lot is, is a good marketing tool for gun stock. Representative Huff. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, Commissioners. My question is um, according to the uh, Enabling Act um, and the, uh, the amendment to it, which never seems to actually make it to it, which is uh, 1442, um, in 399.14F, uh, it says, if the commission at any time requests, uh, that's the Gunstock Area Commission. Um, if the commission at any time requests the county convention for an appropriation 
or for authority to borrow money as provided in section 15, such a request shall be accompanied by a complete budget of expected receipts and expenditures for the current fiscal year. Do we have that tonight? I think we will have that once we hear back from Mr. Day. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Representative Olbert. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you for taking my question. A little odd, confused, please. 1.3, is that going to include the drainage that is going to be necessary when we pay that? Or is that going to be an additional expense? It may be an additional expense for gun stock, which I'm sure the commissioners will agree to, to underwrite, but we don't know yet what the exact one will be. I know, that Mr. Is, is, sorry. If I may follow Mr. Sorry. I know that I know that Mr. Mr. McGonagall is going through the due diligence on this now. Thank you for the question. Sorry, Representative Howard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And uh, thank you for taking my question. Uh, you, you said you had two bids. One bid wasn't a complete bid. Did you give that bid an opportunity to read through their bid so that we're, you know, the uh, Representative um, Howard, the, the lower bid, the company that, that submitted the lower bid, I would characterize them based on the county administrator's discussions with this company as they became increasingly uncooperative as she tried to pin them down for specifics. Um, they just, they were either unwilling or unable to meet the standard required to do the skylight replacement. Oh, and a couple of calls. Okay, so how many windows are we talking? How many skylights are we talking? 12 windows. 12? 12. 12. 12. Different sections. And there are several glass companies out there. Uh, Interstate Glass, uh, Hobby Industries, there's quite a few of them, and none of them were interested in bidding on this. This is, I think the county administrator had to step out, but um, as, as was explained to the Board of Commissioners, this is very specific work in a very specific environment, namely the nursing home. And it's, it's very, it's highly specialized, it's very expensive. Um, as I stated early, earlier, Representative Howard, we're not fans of this number. It is very, very high, but it's just the best we were able to come up with to get this project done. And the silver lining is this company is well respected, the references are good, and the work will be top shelf. Thank you. Any other first time questions before we go to the second question? Are we going to hear from the uh, commission? Yeah, on this? When we get public comments, yes. Can we discuss with the commission at that point? Hmm? Are we going to be able to discuss with the commission at that point? Okay. Are I we going to be able to discuss with the gunstock commissioner at that point, or the one, two, one that's here right now? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Uh, so I just want to reiterate that at the last gunstock area commission meeting. They discuss all sorts of type of drainage and pavements and so on. Um, there were three options that they had. The best was an asphalt pavement. Um, so if people actually attended that meeting, they would have been more aware of what's going on. Thank you. All right, any further questions from the delegation or any proposed comments? All right, I will open. We're in for public comments, uh, members of the public, which would include uh, Commissioner Strang. Would you like me to sit up at the table since I think I'm going to be there for a little bit? Sure, come on up. For the record, I'm Vice Chairman um, Strang from the Gunstock Commission. Um, I'm trying to remember all of your questions from the last 20 minutes or so. Um, let me just make it clear the Gunstock Commission did not request this money. This was offered uh, very generously to us by the Belknap County Commission. We very much appreciate that. We think it's a very generous offer. Um, as such, um, 
the numbers that we're talking about were primarily generated by the Belknap County Commission. Um, I'm, it's unfortunate that they have to say how much money was being offered because sometimes bids have a way of conforming to the money that's being offered, mm -hmm. um, but we can't change that. Um, I can certainly promise to you that no money will be spent either on the engineering contract or on the paving contract without there being a bidding process. Um, I'm the one of the five commissioners that was asked to shepherd this through the Gunstock Commission, and I will not allow this money to be spent without there being um, a number of bids. Um, I've spoken with uh, General Manager uh, Day, and um, what he would like to see is, is the offer, the, the, the money um, appropriated, and then they will proceed with uh, engineering bids, select a company um, selected by the commission at our next meeting, hopefully on May 18th, then we'll have an engineering survey. And then once we know the specifics of that, we will ask for um, bids from paving companies. Um, I do not think that it would be uh, appropriate to intermingle these funds with gun stock funds. Um, I would be very happy to keep this in a separate, um, separate folder, if you will. Um, I don't think any of us on the commission would have a problem with returning the money. Let's say it came in at 1.1. Um, I don't know that it would be proper for us to keep the other 200 saying, well, you gave it to us, tough luck. Um, it's not something we voted on, so I can't say I'm representing the commission uh, in those comments, but I don't think that there would be any objection okay, to that. Um, if the project came in at 1.5, for example, I think it would be very foolish of us to turn down uh, a, a gift of $1.3 million from the commission for the sake of $200,000. Um, I have discussed that with Commissioner Lambert. Uh, I've discussed it with Commissioner Ness, and I think they all agree uh, of a similar mind that um, if we we're talking a little bit more money to do this project correctly, um, that Gunstock would uh, pay for that out of their funds. Um, since we're talking about trying to take a primarily winter only resort and make it more uh, economically productive, even in the summertime for weddings and other functions, it would be very much an upgrade to get out on a paved parking lot rather than for a bride, for example, to drag her wedding train through a dirt parking lot if somebody wanted to have a wedding there uh, in an air conditioned lot. So I, I have to agree, I think this would be a significant upgrade to the resort in general, not just paving a ski area parking lot. So um, I'll be happy to answer any other questions that you may have. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Commissioner, for taking the question. Um, we're hearing a lot about the parking lot. Uh, Representative Dean mentioned the list. I'm wondering from you, what is the most important thing that should be done at Gunstock, in your personal opinion? Is the parking lot at the top of the list, or is it somewhere in the middle or at the bottom? What is the priority that should be done at Gunstock? You personally, my personal opinion is that the, the parking lot is not at the top of the list. It's probably in the middle. When I look at the needed um, changes at Gunstock, I think the Tiger Lift is actually the number one. It's the oldest of the lifts. Um, it's um, <coughs> aging. Um, I would much rather see Gunstock spend their existing capital on either upgrading the existing lift or perhaps even extending it up to the Northeast Ridge and mating that with another way of accessing the top. Um, General Manager Day has mentioned many times that when the panorama lift goes down, there's no other way of getting to the top of the mountain and it concentrates skiers down on the bottom. Uh, it would be great if there was another way of getting to the top. Stratton Mountain, for example, when they have high winds, the gondola shuts down, but you can still get to the top through the chairlifts which are below tree level and therefore not subjected to the same winds as a gondola. So I think it would be great for, to have two ways of getting to the top of the mountain. When lift goes down for mechanical reasons, you still have another way of getting up there. I would rather see the existing capital that we have in reserve at Gunstock put towards upgrading the Tiger Chair. Um, and I would not spend the first uh, million or million three on, on the parking lot. That would be later on, and that's why I think that this is a, a very generous gift from the commission to to go forward with now. Yes, oh, thank you. 
Um, my other question is, is Representative Huff brought up a very good point before appropriating any money to the Gunstock area, uh, Gunstock area commissioners is that you were to present a detailed budget to us. Would that be available for us to review before we appropriate any money? You mean a detailed budget for the parking lot project or a detailed budget for the entire year's operation? The detailed budget for the entire year's operation as requested in the R as pertained to in the RSA. Okay. Um, we are currently in the process of reviewing the budget for fiscal year 23, which started, I believe, uh, April 28th. Um, we have a request to try and sit down with the CFO, Kathy White, to go over the proposed budget in much greater detail. I have a lot of questions based upon what was proposed uh, and presented to us at the uh, April meeting. So we would like to have that meeting. Um, I think we kicked out two different dates, May 11th and May 16th, but we'd like to have that data in order to be able to vote on a proposed budget on May 18th. That being said, what Representative Huff was talking about was a request to borrow money from the county. We are not asking to borrow anything. This was a grant, a gift that was offered to us. So we're not asking to borrow money like we would if we were asking for a bond to be floated. So um, I would ask, do those same rules really apply in this situation? And thank you for that information. I appreciate that. Um, just so um, I understand, um, you mentioned you have a capital reserve fund um, at Gunstock. Um, and obviously, would, I'd like to know how much is in that and what is your cash on hand at this point? I don't know how, exactly how much is in the capital reserve fund. Um, I believe the overall asset um, number that was listed at the last meeting was around $8.8 million to $9 million, somewhere in that, in that range. Thank you. Senator O'Hara. Thank you. Um, Representative Cobb to actually answer my, ask my first question. <laughs> Following up on her last question, um, why can't Gunstock fund this if it and lets this money go to uh, a real department like our correctional facility with their trailer they need it? Um, well, if you look at what we have on hand, we absolutely could afford it, but there are other things that are much more pressing. Um, and as I mentioned, the Tiger Chair would be millions of dollars to replace that. And particularly if we're going to extend that up so that you could get off of Tiger and go on to another lift to take you to the top. Um, that would probably, just looking at what the lift costs were for the master development plan, I would say that those two lifts would eat up the majority of that, um, the reserves that we have. So um, the parking lot would be much lower down. Thank you. Representative Huff, any more? Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Commissioner Strang, I just want to make this I just want to get this clear um, to go back to um, the statute here. I've heard some talk where uh, the, the commission, it is a commissioner here, <laughs> where Commissioner Stan said that um, they offered to you, you guys have said yes, they offered to you. Who actually is requesting this? Is it the commissioner over here or is it the Gunstock Area Commission? Because it's if this statute applies to you folks on the Gunstock Area Commission, not the county commission. Mm -hmm. do you, do you understand? If if guns if the Gunstock Commission had actually gone to the Belknap County Commission and said we would like to request 1.3 million dollars for paving the parking lot, then I think your statutory language would apply. Right. But the inverse happened. The Belknap County Commissioners offered. 1.3 million to gun stock. And the only request that they made of us was we would like a unanimous five to nothing vote to accept this. So and that's what we voted on at the April, uh, I think it was April 23rd meeting. Okay. Um, well, it, it's a follow up, but it's a question, I guess, maybe for the chair. I'm not sure I understand how one group requests for another group or vice versa, it, it's unclear to me. I, I don't know how it is that the county commissioners have any say at all in this. Or, and, do you know what I'm saying? I just, I'm trying to just make sure what's appropriate. Um, I, I don't know, I don't know. And difficulty, I don't have an answer for that whole uh, All right, so I mean, Commissioner Strain, if I could just add one thing. 
because this was being looked at several years ago, which predates my joining the commission, there may have been a request and probably Commissioner Spanos would be better able to answer that. They may be following through on an earlier request from the Belknap County Commission, but right now the, the offer is from the Belknap County Commission to the Gunstock Commission. I'm sorry, Commissioner Strang. So as you know, I go to all the Gunstock meetings. Um, a lot of this was discussed at the previous meeting. So in your opinion, you don't feel we need a parking lot done? Oh, I think it would be a very wise investment. I would say that of the funds that Gunstock has on hand right now, it should not be at the top of the list. Follow I think there are better um, investments of that capital to upgrade the existing um, facilities, primarily the, the Tiger Lift. So, you know, we would put this much further down on the list. And if, so if, if the Belknap County Commission is offering this now, I would say we would be foolish to turn that down. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank you, Mr. Commissioner. Um, so in regards to the parking lot, I drive, I go to Gunstock all the time. It's a mud kit. It's so the commission is offering you $1.3 million towards it, and you feel that is suitable, a good amount of money for that renovation of the parking lot. I would I would be able to better answer that once I see bids. The, the first step is if the money is appropriate, we go out and bid this out to engineering works. Then we select one as a commission and they come in and say, okay, if you want to pave this surface, um, you need to have drainage here. Maybe you need to terrace it because putting it in one surface is not a good idea. Yep. There may need to be two tiers. Um, this is what you need for runoff. Um, then we take those recommendations and we put that out for an RFP from paving company to give us a price. And I think it would be sensible at this point that we also put lighting in on the parking lots. It's probably with, with pavement, we're gonna have a parking lane, so people need to see where they're going. I don't know, maybe you put some charging stations in for electric vehicles. You know, those are all niceties to have. But um, One more follow-up. Um, so at the last meeting, Gunsock Area Commission meeting, um, I forget what the gentleman's name was, but he discussed three different ways they could do a parking lot and that was Mr. McGonagall. Yes, uh, and he said the asphalt would be the best way to go because of the drainage and all those issues. Mm -hmm. And you agree with that decision? Um, I spoke with Pat several weeks before. I was actually very impressed with the knowledge that he had. Um, I think it was felt by all that that would be the sensible thing to do was to not go with ledge pack, which yeah. is basically you know crushed stone with some dirt in between to compact it. Um, you know. It's what I have on my driveway at home, but is that going to last 10 years no. or have the same longevity as asphalt? I don't think so. So I was not surprised to hear that from, from Mr. McGonagall. So, and by the way, he is uh, available on Zoom. So if oh, you I didn't even realize um, that. Okay. think that this, this is more appropriate for him to answer. You can direct that. To him. Okay, thank you. Um, I, I felt that asphalt was probably the most sensible surface to go to. That's, that's the vibe I got to. Thank yeah. you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. My understanding is that this money that's being requested are ARPA funds, not general funds of the county. Mm -hmm. And so the, the question I have, and I don't know where commission, the GAC commissioner or the county commissioner or the county administrator can answer. Is there a deadline? My understanding is we have the ARPA funds in the county's bank accounts. Is there a deadline by which those funds must be allocated and dispersed or it has to go back to the feds. Representative Silver, thank you for asking that question. And yes, uh, the funding timetable sunsets December 31st, 2024. Follow up. Okay, I, this is a question for the Gunstock Commissioner. If we were to approve the $1.3 million from ARPA funds, the Gunstock Area Commission, and it goes from the county's ARPA fund account. <laughs> Would the commission, Gunsight like Art Commission, accept a, a condition that those funds be placed in an interest bearing separate account until such time as you have the bids on the engineering and the paving, and they have been approved by a majority vote of the Gunstock Area Commission before any funds are dispersed? Would that be agreeable? 
Well, I can't speak for the commission because we haven't voted on that, but I would be happy to um, support such a request at our next meeting. And further, that if there's any surplus of the, of the 1.2 million that would come back to the counties, our book counts. I would be happy to support a similar proposal. I don't think it would be um, in, I don't think it would be fitting in fairness of this generous offer to keep uh, extra money that was left over if we came in under budget. Yeah, if I may, uh, another possible solution to that question, Representative Silver, is instead of uh, a 1.3 transitioning from the Belknap County funds directly to the Gunstar Area Commission upon approval, it could certainly be set up that the Gunstar Area Commission submits back to the county commissioners to be reimbursed for their expenditures not to exceed $1.3 million. So therefore, the delegation as well as the commission is controlling 1.3 because the, the consensus and the vote of the board of commissioners, county commissioners, certainly is we want to fund the projects to, to <coughs> for the parking lot up to $1.3 million. That's why I was certainly adamant that I wanted RFPs and my train of thought is certainly we would be expending those funds as they are needed, not we're going to give them 1.3 and then hope the project is done and comes in where it's at. My concern is that if we don't transfer the money from the county to the Gunstock Area Commission, that an argument by the feds might be made that we missed the deadline, we didn't properly allocate it or anything like that. If we, if we allocate the funds to the Gunstock Area Commission with these conditions, it's out of the county's ARPA funds. We've done, we moved the money, we've done the ARPA appropriation, and we've gotten the county commission out of it and left it to the Gunstock Area Commissioners to decide how to expend it. You know, a, a subject to getting proper bids. I just don't think it's a good idea to keep it in the counties. counties. Right now it's in the county coffers. And I don't want to have a problem with the feds coming back to us there and saying, well, we, yeah, we, we understand you wanted to use it, but you didn't, you didn't send it out properly. Representative Howard and Representative Terry. Jones. Um, just a couple of comments. Gunstock has been trying to raise money for this packing lot for about six years that I know about and going to the commissioner's meeting. And, you know, there's been grants applied for, uh, we tried to let this place and like Commissioner Scano said. Um, and, you know, I think this is a, a worthwhile investment into the county complex because Gensler creates part of the county complex. And I guess what? <laughs> So this, this gets really complicated because we've got three parties involved here. Well, maybe four, including the federal government. What I just heard is that the funds have to be utilized prior to December 24th or appropriated to be utilized. Is that That's correct? That's correct, Representative. So, it's, so I'm also correct in understanding that effectively we've got a whole other year and a half. Two and a half. Two and a half, I'm sorry, two and a half years <laughs> uh, before we have to even begin to worry about money going back to the federal government because it's not being used. Well, we have to worry sure. about things in Terry's is inflation. Right, right. So that, that, so, is, that is why we don't want to go any deeper with this. I understand. The cost is going up by the set, literally. And that's not where I'm going with this. Okay. So just, 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 just to allay any fear that you might have to that effect. Let's suggest the delay here. So what we have heard, Commissioner Strang, is that you have accepted a, a, a gift of effectively up to $1.3 million because you might not need the entire $1.3 million. You've, in, I, you've indicated, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, that you're, you're going to proceed to uh, you, your, uh, you and your colleagues to, to put this out to bid. Um, do you believe that in order to, for you and your colleagues to feel confident about moving forward with this project, proposed project, and to put it out to bid, that you would actually need to receive those funds to do so. 
or would the fact that the commissioners have indicated that they're willing to provide you in effect a $1.3 million gift courtesy of the federal government and a consensus of or a vote of this delegation in support of that project that you wouldn't actually need to receive an affirmative vote this evening to do that, to actually transfer, to authorize the transfer of that money. Um, if, if, if I'm understanding your question correctly, um, I, can, I can say that the mountain would like to have confirmation that the Belknap County Commission is going to proceed with this grant with approval of the delegation. Uh, we will then take the next step, which is to request bids from engineering firms. And I would like to be able to have a vote of the commission at our May 18th meeting to select one of those bids and have an engineer, engineering firm start right away. Um, I would hope that it would only be a matter of a week or two for an engineering firm to say, this is what we think you need to have done, such that we can then put that out for a request for proposal from paving companies such that we can get um, those bids to review at the June commission, uh, Gunstock Commission meeting. I'd, I'd like to do this as quickly as possible. Be, for the primary reason of what Commissioner Spano said is that inflation is going to eat up this money very quickly. So the quicker we get this done, the quicker we lock a price, the, the more expeditiously we can use this money. Quick follow -up. Um, in government circles, there's a distinction made between authorizing funds and appropriating funds. Would you be comfortable if we were to vote to authorize $1.3 million, the approval of and authorizing $1.3 million, and then actually appropriating the exact amount once you give us or give the county commissioners the, the low bid that you would like to see accepted? I don't see that being a problem. I think if we were to select a, an engineering firm at the May 18th Gunstock Commission meeting, um, then even if we had to pay for that up front, you know, I, I, I have to express, uh, admit some ignorance. I don't know what an engineering survey would cost, but what would it be, 10,000, 20, $30,000 tops? I think Gunstock could easily pay for that out of cash on hand and then request reimbursement from the, the county uh, as part of this grant. Thank you. So, like, so this is like, this is trying to get a great presentation. So, just for discussion point, I was trying to figure out, given everyone's topic points about what a motion might look like to get something going on. So, um, for purposes of discussion and the public hearing, my my inclination of motion would be something like we move to appropriate up to one point three million dollars of ARPA funds for the purposes of engineering and paving the parking lot at Gunstock to be dispersed by the county commissioners upon receipt of invoices from GAC and a request for payment by a majority vote of the GAC. So, so I'm not giving that motion. I'm just I'm just using it as a talking point so we can have a discussion and whether or not that would suit the purposes of both the commissioners as well as the well, commissioners of the commissioners. Um, and and uh, so we have an idea of what we're talking about for a motion. Uh, before we go to the second round, so, so Representative Spano, you have anybody else I have a motion, but not a, we are not ready for a motion. We're okay. still in the public uh, All right. comments. All right, any uh, Senator Kampfla? Thank you, Mr. Chair. So I'm listening to all of this discussion about this parking lot and how it's a great investment, but yet I spoke to you, Commissioner, and you said that the parking lot is not at the top of the list, it's more towards the middle of the list. So for me, I'd like to know what that list is because is, if there's something better that we can be investing in in gun stocks in the parking lot, and then I would like to know what that might be. So I don't know. I mean, that is my question. I have the question is really two parts. Will this parking lot project qualify under the ARPA rules for ARPA funding? And will the other items on this list, this wish list that might be higher up, will they qualify for ARPA funding? I'm going to have to um, yes. decline to answer that because I believe that list is held tight by the, the commission and, and I don't have um, the answer to that. Representative Silver, the parking lot project does meet the federal guidelines, the criteria. What about the lift improvements? Yes. 
short answer is yes. Lift improvements would also. Yes. Yeah, this is for the um, Mr. Werner, Mr. Scams. Um, when you decided to come before the delegation for the parking lot, did you go to the commissioners, the Gunstock Area Commissioners, and ask them what their priority list was first? No, we did not. Thank you. Oh. Um, yeah, that was on the list. For those who I from the delegation of the Human Capital Funding Change to the county, the commissioners did put out a request to the entire community. Anybody who wanted to apply for the funding for a project. And that was just so. So that was, I guess, that was what was we call the first round. Mm -hmm. But it was an offer by the county commissioners to come in. And the portfolio. Thank you, Terry. Um, So, is it my understanding is that you know, I would like to see a parking lot eventually. I don't think this parking lot issue is going to go away. It's going to be dealt with at some point. Yeah, it sounds like, correct me if I'm wrong, we can allocate this money for the parking lot and then also do the lift out of gun stock funds. So can we possibly just have both? I mean, is that, am I understanding that correctly? Can we, are, are you asking, is there enough money in gun stock reserve to handle the tiger lift? Or even a part of it, like just maybe placing the lift? Um, I believe there is. I haven't seen any final figures on replacing the tiger lift. And again, if we want to extend it to a better landing area such that someone could ski then to uh, a, lift, a second lift that goes to the top, um, those are additional costs. but. Um, I, I think those are all sensible things to look at. I mean, I, I'd like to see us upgrade existing facilities before we start looking at adding other facilities, a hotel or a road to the top or a restaurant at the top. I know those are all parts of the master development plan, but those are looking at adding things that we don't currently have. Whereas upgrading the tiger share, paving the parking lot, those are fixing existing structures and, and facilities that we have. And I think that should be the, the first priorities in my mind. Just one quick comment. So does it really matter if we took this money, um, this ARC funds, and uh, used it towards the Tiger lift, and then Gunstock took their reserve money and uh, worked on the parking lot? I mean, it's kind of like, but it's all the same to me. Um, yeah. Commissioner Spanos, or Commissioner. Um, so you guys have put away or you're recommending $1.3 million to improve the market lot. I personally know this has been going on for six plus years. Um, as a skier, I know that parking lot is an absolute disaster in the winter. So all these other recommendations about the tiger lift and this and that, you guys are recommending this money, these funds to be provided for the parking lot. So I don't see why our, is everybody else trying to put this money towards other venues where sitting in front of us is the parking lot. So why specifically did you decide to put these funds towards the parking lot? Mm. We just agreed, and I guess we'll disagree with Commissioner Spring. We consider to be the highest priority for gun stock to bring it well into up to a 21st century standard and at least have asphalt rather than mud. So, so this reminds me of the situation where a, a, a donor wants to make a gift of 500 million dollars to his alma mater university and the donor comes and he says you can spend it where most needed which means that the university, in this case, by analogy, the Gun Stock Area Commission would decide to spend where it's most needed. So you have a conversation between the two parties and the, uh, the university says to the donor, uh, uh, we would like to spend it on an athletic facility. And the donor says, fine. 
which means that without whatever else funds that the university has, they can spend them on the, the building of a science and engineering center. This is what this is beginning to sound like to me. You, you have offered a gift of $1.3 million to the Gunstock Air Commission to pay the parking lot. As a result of all of the questions that have been asked tonight and the responses that Commissioner Strang has given, it is his view, and perhaps the, the view of the Gunstock Area Commission commissioners, that a higher priority would be the Tiger Lift, which would then, if, if you were to give $1.3 million to the Gunstock Area Commission for the Tiger Lift, that would then make more money available in their capital reserve, would make money in their capital reserve budget available for the parking lot should they choose to do so. Having heard that they are placing a higher priority on the Tiger Lift, and that they are the Gunstock Area Commission who are primarily charged with managing the Gunstock Area Resort area. What would be your response to what you're hearing now with respect to consideration of a, a different, uh, not, not a different amount of gift, but how the gift could be used by the Gunstock Area Commission? Uh, my response to that would be <clears throat> the Board of Commissioners voted unanimously for this appropriation. The GAC, despite significant discord over this past year, voted 5 nothing in favor of this proposal. Senator Howard. <clears throat> I just want to follow up on Representative Terry's comment. Uh, the difference is the packing lot is going to cost 1.2 million, maybe something like that, 1.3. The Tiger List is about 10 million. So do we want to appropriate 10 million for the Tiger List? Do we want to appropriate 1.3 for the Tiger List? That's the question here. <laughs> Well, the money could be fungible. So, and, and if I could add to that, replacing a lift is a multi year project. Right. Um, they're, they're in short supply. Um, even if we decided this summer we wanted to upgrade it, uh, we probably wouldn't be doing it until next year. Um, in which case, then we're pushing the parking lot out even further and it's going to cost more than 1.3. <laughs> Parking lot is something we can do right here and now. It actually will probably increase our business, particularly in the summertime, because we have a much better surface for people to, to walk on. Um, I think it would increase summer usage of the facility. And we already have air conditioning going in. So I think it actually would bring a, a, an earlier return on investment than pushing it out two or three years. Thank you. Um, this is really a question for uh, county commissioners. I know you have a big list of uh, projects that people want to spend our money on. Does the commission commissioners feel that this is the best place to spend it, or are there higher priorities within the county than Gunstock, which is granted a secondary operation, not totally county, but under county control, sort of? The board of commissioners is very comfortable with this proposal. Okay. But there's not other places you would want to put this money? I just have heard of an there awful are, lot of projects. There are other places right now, but, but tonight it's, it's really all about gun stock and okay. skylights. Okay. All right. Representative Blodier. Blodier, you would be the first. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, just a procedural uh, issue. This is ARPA money from the federal government. The commission um, on commissioners decided how to use it. It's not a gift, but we wonder if the minutes can show that. We're using gift, and just in case they come back, it's not a gift of appropriation. That can be shown. Perfect show. And just a, a, a quick question uh, for the commissioners. Count. <laughs> um, how much ARPA money do we have left uh, that hasn't already been allocated as well? The total project list exceeds. We're, we're getting uh, expecting twelve million in total, just under twelve million, and the total project list now is about fourteen million. Um, so it's all been there's it's all planned out, um, but it will be prioritized when we get down closer. I think about six, a little over six million has. Been appropriated to okay. be spent at this point. So we got about half of them left. Yes. Thank you. So again, again, we're enjoying the presentation. I think probably the reason in listening to your discussion and conversation, it's time. 
is the big issue. We have two things. We have a quicker mm -hmm. return on investment by doing the micro lot versus the pilot which which mm -hmm. as you said, supply chain issues and everything else, odds of being able to get what you need is not very really reasonable um, for, for a quick turnaround. <laughs> And number two, it's also again about time and it's fund expenditures. If we this is a project that we could spend funds on now, we have installed for the summer, you know, grant in a fairly quick turnaround and be able to get a quick startup on a return on investment by the day as compared to other potential uh, funding sources. So I'm assuming does that sound why one of the reasons GAC felt that it was a, a good project to move forward because again, quick turnaround on time, quick turnaround on return on investment. I believe that's the general consensus. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. My question for the county commissioners. Um, I just, <clears throat> I understand the skylights. I fully, I, that's not a question on my mind. The problem I struggle with is I don't look at Gunstock as a department of our county. It's, it's a county asset that creates revenue for our county and offsets the tax base for our taxpayers. So I don't see, understand why these ARPA funds should go to a county asset rather than a county department like our corrections. And I, I trust that you guys do have the county at heart, but is this truly the top of our list of the $14 million? Priorities are subjective. I believe 25, 30 different opinions in here, but the fact is the county owns, Gunstock is, is county real estate. So this is a brick and mortar improvement to a county asset to county real estate and that's how we view it okay thank you thank you Mr. Chair. um my question is is just listening to um jacket she said that we were getting about 12 million half of it is left but the opera fund list is over it's close to 14 million so that means if we appropriate 1.3 million dollars for gunshot there is several projects that won't be funded. What projects won't be funded if we appropriate this money? <laughs> the entire list is included in the budget packet that mm -hmm. we all have. One one project in there is a is at least a two million dollar placeholder for a solar field. So, so I mean, there, there's a there's projects that are on that list that have been requested, and uh, as we talked before, there's going to be a priority as to how those how those projects get risen to the top and you know that's certainly one that may or may not come to fruition uh, you know there's been a lot of talk about this 1.3 and the way i i support this project is this was an identified problem at gunstock we have a funding source that we can solve that problem and it can be done quickly and so to me that makes perfect sense to use these federal funds to fix that problem so it's not coming out of, of any operations budget or expenditures. That was kind of the, the goal behind the ARPA funds as when they were rolled out. They were not to be used to offset operating expenditures or operating costs for any agency. It was for economic development and, and to get these funds back into the community as quickly as possible. So that's why I, I support this 1.3 for this project for the repair and fix that parking lot of gun stuff. Just to follow up, you mentioned the solar field. Um, just a quick question. What would be the benefit to the county taxpayers with the solar array versus the, the paving of the gun stuff parking lot? Solar array would, would reduce energy costs for the con county complex. Which would be a direct uh, reduction in our tax rate for our, our budget uh, for county for all county taxpayers. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Where the gunstock parking lot is not a direct um, reduction in the tax rate for the would that be a fair assumption? Uh, well, I think that. It, it could certainly be a fair assumption, however, that there also could be a fair assumption that to boost the economic development of gun stock would increase their revenue, which would then in turn re increase the revenue share that comes back to the county that offsets county tax. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Moving on to the uh, we are still in uh, public comments, and uh, I think it's probably time to uh, actually get back to public comments. 
So I would like to uh, solicit <coughs> the remaining public if you have comments. Uh, Thank you, Commissioner. That's a big crowd tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so with that, I will close the public comments. And uh, now, uh, Representative Silver. I would like to move that our funds, which are not gifts, are not pre money, but that are in the hands of the Gibbonoff County, and the sum of $1.3 million be transferred forthwith to the Gunstock Area Commission to be dealt with under the following conditions. The funds would be held in an interest bearing separate account pending receipt by the Gunstock Area Commission of not less than three bids for engineering services regarding the parking lot project, and not less than three bids with respect to the paving, including drainage. Bids meaning true bids or request for proposal, and then only after a request for proposal or bid has been approved by a majority of the Gunstock Area Commission that those funds then be withdrawn from that account to pay those items. And if the project is completed for under $1.3 million, the surplus would be returned to the county's part of the funds. That's my motion. Second. 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 So uh, the motion being made, uh, oh. Senator Silver, do you want to wait? Discuss your motion. Yes, I would like to. I don't want to take a chance that for some reason, some technicality, the feds try to recapture the money because we haven't appropriated it. I want to get it out of here. If we, if there's an agreement that this is a part of a useful project that qualifies for ARPA funding, and we've got the ARPA money, let's give them the ARPA money. We've gone through the process in the past six or eight months of putting people on the Gunstock Area Commission with varying degrees of expertise in different areas, let them decide on a business-like basis what is appropriate bid or request a proposal for engineering services and for paving. And if it turns out that the engineering services and the paving comes in from the total cost of more than $1.3 million, they can come back to us and say, hey, we are short, or we think we can do it with this. But let them let them run their business. Let them run their business. It's not our business. It's not our boards. I'm completely against transferring money over to Gunstock Area Commission prior to them having a solid bid and something they agree upon. Are we just handing money to people to do what they please with it? I mean, I, I don't like this idea at all. Um, Agree with representative boards. Hey, can you say that again? My issue um, is a, a request for appropriation has to be accompanied by the um, by the budget or or, or, or the. Uh, um, yeah, a complete budget. The reason that that's in there, the reason that it's, that it's it's for that, is so that we can make sure that it's warranted, so that we can check out that something else can't be paid. I have to just say this: I, I, it's been gnawing at me. I'm going to say it out loud in public. I have a very very hard time appropriating money for an area when that basically is for people to slide down a mountain on sticks when there are other things such as a nursing home that we've been harangued at for a year and a half that was underfunded when there's all these other things so you know i want this to be done right i i do understand representative silver's um concerns and once we get to that point i will probably be for that but right now i am not um and that's what i had to say senator o'hara then representative uh, I, I was gonna I have a motion after. I have a motion after. 
Not there, but there you go. So, uh, thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. First of all, let me say how much I appreciate the levity here a few moments ago. Um, I'm still pinching myself. <laughs> I've been here long enough so that I appreciate what just happened. Uh, uh, more seriously, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, with respect to uh, what's happening right now, just want to point out that uh, not only is it practice to allow the maker of the motion to speak first to his motion once it is or, or once it is seconded, but also it's customary before the vote to allow the maker of the motion to have the last word under Roberts. Um, that being said, I now understand we may be looking at a different motion. Uh, so I'm not going to speak to uh, the, the motion at this time. I'm going to wait to see what happens here. Thank you. I move the table so uh, represent so with motion so we I can second. appropriate the money to the next one first before we handle that stock. I second it. Excuse me, point, uh, point of information, point of order. Just, I, I just want to make sure I heard this correctly. You want to table this motion until we take up and dispose of the motion, a motion that somebody's going to make with respect to the nursing home and then it would automatically come back and off the table because of the way you worded your motion. Can't do that. Is that illegal? Okay, throw on the table. Okay, we'll motion that we bring it back off the table. But could. are you signifying in advance that's your intention? After the nursing home, possibly yes, yes. That, well, possibly. I just want to handle the nursing home first before oh, okay. we handle this big gun thank you. I, I understand that was going on. I think I'm like nursing will be less of a debate than the gun side. I think I is, is Representative Terry agreeing with Representative O'Hara? <laughs> <laughs> that happens a few times. It was slow. That's well, hey, hey, hey. I withdraw my observation. Hey. <laughs> Representative Terry. Uh, there is a motion and a second to table the previous motion. Um, Guess I'll ask uh, for a voice vote. All those in favor of table of the previous motion say aye. Aye. Those opposed to tabling the motion say nay. 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 It's a vision. <laughs> what do we get? We have first have to have a ruling from the chair before we ask for the vision. Uh, the uh, chair is undecided, so we will have a division vote uh, to clarify. Just call roll. Uh, we'll call it. No, they roll call. Yeah, yeah do roll. Show of hands. Yeah. 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 It's fine. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. All those in favor of tabling the previous motion, raise your hands. Uh, six, seven, eight, nine. The motion carries. Do I need the nays? All those opposed, say nay. Raise your hands. The eyes have it. So, the motion to be tabled. Representative, uh, where are you? Oh, I know. The reason why I voted for table is because I think that we should leave the proper fund money in the county proper until it is actually needed to be dispersed. I have no problem with funding this project, but I do think that the money should stay in the county proper. And uh, later this evening, we're going to be discussing a grant. So, uh, you know, that money might come in useful for a few weeks around the county before it's needed again. So, I move we appropriate what three hundred eighty one thousand dollars of ARPA funds for the purpose of replacing the leaking skylights at the nursery home. Well, it, no, we already appropriated one hundred last year, so we only need three eighty one of ARPA funds to make the four hundred eighty one. Whoever wants to second, someone can second. Motion by line second. Second. Any opposed? Say aye. Discussion. Uh, would you like to speak to your motion? Representative Lang. Lang. Uh, I think we've discussed so much about our concerns. <laughs> I think the motion stands as as me. Representative Howard. I don't disagree that the nursing home needs a repair. 
I just have a real problem with spending forty thousand dollars on a skyline. That to me is just we are being taken advantage of. There has to be another way to get bids for this project. Um, that's it. I just I think we're being taken advantage of here, and I just can't imagine. I mean, how big are these skylines? That's so, yeah. Yeah. Let her answer first because she yeah. can't answer my question. How many how big? <laughs> I don't know how big the skylights are, but I know there are 12 skylights. We did ask how can we possibly do that outrageously expensive. Well, I mean, and I mean, is it the size of this table or is it the size of this space? Well, I'll, I'll ask. Um, Sean, I would say you that. That if you look at this whole section right here, they're probably that big and they're on a tilt. Okay, so that's basically the size. That's what the that's other part cost involved is in um, they're required to provide vaccinated workers, or they will have to be tested every day by the nursing home. They have to put in a uh, air management system during the construction, temporary partitions to. So there's a there's a lot more involved than just purchasing the skylights. Thanks to COVID. I was gonna, yeah, just oh, no, 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 no. thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Um, I guess the question I would ask that this price of 40,000 for revising the skylight do we need skylights or can we just move over it and say that? We, we, we actually asked that question of the architects because that, that came up at one point. Do we should we spend this much money to replace the skylights? What they told us is that you know, have to cover over them or remove them and replace them with dry wall, whatever they do. Um, they thought we would save about $100,000 off of this 481, that we'd still be spending all that money and now we wouldn't have as nice a nursing home. I just wanna know if those, uh, if those requirements were federally implemented, not by the states. The requirements for the contractors. No, that's uh, that's through CMS. That's uh, federal. Further okay. <laughs> okay. discussion. I'll I'll comment that uh, when you essentially create trillions of dollars and you throw it around, the price of projects goes up, and you add uh, restrictions of various things on workers to get them to fill it. Uh, we're going to pay extraordinary prices for things, and the price of the gallon of diesel it was now six dollars for more. Far from free money. This is costing taxpayers twice. Uh, with that, Mr. Chair, uh, last word. Last word. You get the last word. So I, I just want to make. A single comment of replace blinking skylights. <laughs> now you're talking about buckets in the hallway, right? To, to cut, catch rainwater as we come into the spring season and rain. So I think this is an appropriate appropriation to deal with the issues that are going on. All right. Are we ready for the question? The motion is to appropriate $350,000 for skylights with the funding coming from. The um, do you want to uh, roll uh, call? No, go. Would you like to roll call? No, no. <laughs> a show of hands, then. All those in favor, raise your hands. It is unanimous. Ooh, is it? Uh, your reading <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chair, I move we appropriate up to up to one point three million dollars of ARPA funds for the purposes of engineering and paving of the parking lot at Gunstock to be dispersed by the county commissioners upon a receipt of an invoice from Gunstock Area Commissioners and at the request, uh, I'm sorry, request of payment by the majority of the vote of the Gunstock Area Commissioners. Second. 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 Anyone? Any of us? Any of us? So far, do you want that again? 
<laughs> if you have it written, I have it written. Second. We have a motion and a second. <laughs> so again, I, I think this is the safest way. We've appropriated an earmark $1.3 million of the ARPA funds for a specific project. However, if the project comes under, we're only be paying the invoices up to the amount that, that the project costs. Um, I, I think I, I'm a little, uh, previous motion, I'm a little concerned that we're reaching into, into the GAC and start telling them how they're going to be running their operations. So I was a little concerned about the last motion. Um, I think this one puts all the curbs on it we need. The commissioners can are able to pay the uh, appropriate invoices once they've been approved by the Constant Air Commission. Um, so it creates two sets of eyes on it to uh, to keep it uh Above board, so to speak, not that I expect that. So I use a nice clean motion that only pays the expenses that are necessary and allows them to go through the engineering study and submit the invoices for for the engineering study and then get the bid for the pavement and then submit the, the invoice for the bidding of the pavement. So I think it's a nice clean method of, of uh, appropriating these funds. Um, Again, I still raise the concern. It's still the same concern. It doesn't matter how many times we try to appropriate this. Although I may not be, you know, for or against at this moment, it has to be done the proper way. And it's the you know, it's the Enabling Act. Everybody likes to go back to it. And it says right here, plain black and white, it has such a request shall be accompanied by a complete budget. I don't have one. So this is not a request as far as I'm concerned. And my vote will be no. Is that a request from Gunstock to us or us to Gunstock? I, I just, I don't, I don't it, have the name. It has to be, Gunstock is is making the request for the money. Yeah. Commission, We're not giving the commissioners uh, 1.3 million. We're giving Gunstock 1.3 million. So if Gunstock is not asking for it, certainly not giving it to the commissioners. Further discussion? Yes. Yes. Well, sorry, I'm just trying to get you. Um, what I brought up earlier, um, I still think that, although I, I agree, it's a project that's necessary. I've slogged through mud over there. I've stepped in puddles. I couldn't see the dark. I know it needs to be done. I just feel that Gunstock in his position should be doing his own improvements and not asking the county for money. I think the county has better use of star for funds than pay the parking lot. And Gunstock, I believe, has the money to do it and should do it with their own funds. Thank you, Chair. And I know you went that into more of who's requesting this and, 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 you know, regarding Gunstock. But the fact of the matter is, the appropriation is the, the motion is to appropriate $1.3 million of our funds for the paving of Gunstock parking lot. We are appropriating right to two Gunstock. Therefore, in my opinion, the government of health is correct with the enabling statute. Gunstock is owned by the county. It's no different than we if we appropriated after funding to pay the prisoners for that. We are appropriating this money to pay gunstock taxes, not for the gunstock commissioners, but for the people of the county that utilize the after facility and the business. So I think it's a good investment to let the commissioner that earlier. This will actually increase summer tourism because people coming to a wedding venue do not want to be walking through a muddy pack. So I think it's a good investment for the county to success. Um, I hear Representative Huff raising a um, an interesting uh, question as to whether uh, the action that is that is being requested in this motion is actually consistent with and an agreement with the statute. And I've not heard anybody thus far clarify whether it is or whether it is not. So um, unless somebody can do that, I'd like to revert to my uh, a way that enabled 
us to be able to do something without delay if it was okay to do it. Um, and, and so that you, you, it did not necessitate another meeting. And the phrase that, that we used in, in, in uh, my presbyteries was, if the way be clear. In other words, Representative Lang's authorizing motion would go forward if there's no conflict with the statute. If there is conflict with the statute, rather than to have us be repudiated in terms of what we've done here, yeah. the chair would make an inquiry of the county attorney or the attorney general to get a legal opinion as to what is contained within the motion is legal or whether Representative Huck's question is actually accurate in his view that it's not. So I would like to ask Representative Lang if he would be willing to add the phrase, if the way be clear to his motion so mm -hmm. that we don't have to, and that would be an amendment to the motion. Before we go there. Yes. If you wouldn't mind a, a little shoot thought process. Sure. Myself. Um, we are considering an appropriation, supplement appropriation, voted on by the county commission. The enabling statute, which technically is not in RSA, it's chapter law from 1959. Okay. Just you know, technicalities. Um, directs the actions of the Gunstock Commission. The Gunstock Commission may be best served to uh, have a second look at that and uh, make sure that they are in compliance with the United States, if that does affect that. I, I don't know that, but I think like your, your suggestion is probably Good, and I think the Gunstock uh, Area Commission would probably uh, take that under advisement along with the county commissions. Got Mr. It. Chairman, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I think you you raised the clarifying point that I think, Mr. Terry, you're looking for, right? So the delegation is appropriating funds to the county commissioners for our request, and one of the projects in the ARP funds that we intended to, to use those funds for is a project called Pave the Parking Lot at Gunstock. The motion that Representative Lang made leaves all of the appropriation and expenditures at the, at the county, Belknap County level, right? So the, so the Gunstock Area Commission is going to submit a bill to, the, to Belknap County for payment. Now, I, the way mechanically I see this happening is then the Belknap County expenditure is directly to the contractor, to the vendor, to the engineer. So we're not appropriating money, we're not appropriating money to, to the Gunstock Area Commission. If, if Representative Silver's motion had been passed and gone forth, uh, appropriating 1.3 to directly transfer to them, then I think I would agree with you. And then there's some, there's some ambiguity in, in the chapter law. But this body is now is appropriating funds of, of ARPA projects that is in the county commissioner's operating budget. And now the county commissioners have the authority to expend that money. And so we're going to expend that money by, by request of by invoice to XYZ engineering firm for engineering work to for the parking lot. Same thing for the pavement up to $1.3 million. Once we, we reach that, then the county commissioners are not going to be expending any more money. And then if, if the Gunstock Area Commission wants to finish that project and it's going to cost more, then they're going to pay for that out of their operating budget. Just so that uh, we're clear on what the phrase, if the way be clear means. If the way be clear is not an obstacle and it's not a CYA. Does everybody know what that means? Yeah. <laughs> so it's not an obstacle. I see she told me right that one. We're good. <laughs> she told me. So, so it's, it's not what it is. If the way be clear is not an obstacle, what it says is that if there are any unresolved questions, they will be resolved in good faith by any parties for whom there appears to be an unresolved question. So it, it doesn't prevent the action from going forward. It's a, a, a kind of a seal of assurance that everything will be done properly. And if there is an obstacle that comes up, 
by someone challenging and getting a favorable interpretation at variance with what has been spun out here in the last few minutes, then the, 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 the things do not go forward until that question is resolved. So I, I look at it as not being an obstacle, but being friendly. All right, so that was not a, a, a motion. I didn't think it was, a, it, was, it was, you were saying it was appropriate at the moment, but I'm ready to ask Representative Lang if he accepts that as a friendly amendment. If he does, it becomes part of the main motion. If he's opposed to that, then I'm going to have to propose. Let's finish our conversation at the end of our conversation. I'll decide whether I want to amend it or not, if that's okay. Well, what, what, what I think there's still happen? people talking. So I oh, oh, you mean at the end? At the end, before we vote, right. we can make a decision. All right, so this is for Commissioner Strain. So it is my understanding that Gunstock has not approved the budget at all for, for the financial year. Am I correct? We're in that process right now and hope to conclude that at our next meeting. On so, how can you guys provide a budget to everybody sitting here if you don't have one? Well, obviously, since we haven't approved one yet, there is not one to provide to you. Case closed. Right. Thank we you. Are, we are not going back into the discussion. We are discussing one fair vote. I just have a quick question. And does anyone on the delegate, where does the year end of that stock? Is it April 30th or March 31st? No, it's it's the end of April. So we are just now into fiscal year 23. Further discussion? Um, Representative Lyon would like to address. Suggestions by are we, are we at the last word comment here at this point? Well, uh, we are not to the last word until uh, Representative Perry has his uh, issue addressed. So, I, I'm sorry, Representative, I'm not inclined to do that because I think it throws amb ambiguity into the into the motion. We say now this is, they don't have a budget, so does that now cause a problem? I, I, I'm a little nervous about adding on language. I think it's pretty clear. And if I'm going to speak, I'll speak a little bit towards the end of what I was going to say. But we had a couple very important things said right at the very end here. And when we're looking at the chapter, the chapter law that President Huff was nice enough to give me, it says if the commission, by commission, it means the GAC, at any time requests of the county convention an appropriation, they are not here requesting an, an, an appropriation. The county commissioners are here requesting an appropriation. So I think right on its face, the, the law doesn't apply. Um, that it's the GA, the Gunstock area, the county commissioners that are making it a request of the delegate of the delegation for a $1.3 million appropriation for the purposes of paving Gunstock. When I go further and I think about this, um, and the commissioner Spano said this, GAC is a management portion of our company. They don't own the asset. We own the asset. So it's wholly appropriate that the county commissioners make the request to pave and repair and upgrade a piece of using, using ARPA funds for, um, for a county asset. Um, so again, I, 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 I'm, you want to make a motion that's your call, but yeah. I'd be in voted again. I'd be yeah. I vote against it only because I think it adds yeah. too much ambiguity into the statute and makes it or into the motion and makes it unclear now what would stop this. Right now we have a simple appropriation request, and I think that's a, and and a, yeah. and, a, and, a, and a disbursement mechanism, which I think is appropriate. Is yeah. it, it was suggested and offered if it was deemed to be helpful, useful, or necessary. What I'm hearing. From you is that you don't believe that it's needful, useful, or necessary, or helpful in any way. There, because you do not anticipate that there will be any difficulty whatsoever with the concern raised by Representative Huff. Therefore, uh, I am perfectly fine with uh, not offering it as an amendment, uh, given your comments. Look, it could be used at another time at another place, but not tonight. Hmm. Representative, let's see anyone else uh, first time around before Representative Huff gets number two. Uh, yeah. <laughs> go ahead, I'll uh, thank you. Mr. Chair, I, I just got to throw this out one more time. Uh, Representative Lang makes an eloquent argument. This delegation has run into a few stumbling blocks for maybe 
paying attention or not paying attention to certain laws or enabling acts or things that are we are bound by. I think we are bound to have them follow the rules and by pretending one side is not really asking for it, the other side is kind of asking for it is shady at best. And I really recommend that we don't follow through on this. That's my speech. Um, out of consideration for my colleague, I do offer as an amendment if the way be clear because it's not an obstacle and is not hurtful in any way. I offer the amendment if the way be clear. If it's seconded, I'll, I don't think I need to continue to speak. Do I have a second? Second. Seconded by Representative Aldrich. Discussion on the amendment, amendment motion. All those in favor of the uh, amendment to add the way be clear, raise your hand. This is on the amendment, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 Six. Opposed? Raise your hand. Five, six, seven, eight. The motion fails. Back to the main motion. Yes, sir. Um, I'm with the table motion. I feel like I think on we we don't know what we want to do. I feel like all of us are up in the air about this 1.39, or at least in a big chunk. For a second. Second. Oh. Motion to table by Representative O'Hara, second by Representative Aldrich. Discussion. Uh, sorry, not no discussion on a table motion. What's my clerk doing? Sorry. <laughs> 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 I'm All those in favor of the motion to table, raise your hands. Three, four, five. All those opposed, the motion fails. So back to the main motion. And um, so being open to discussion, I'd like to point out. Um, Something that hasn't been discussed on this. Uh, when we talk about the budget of gun stock and the funding, uh, this parking lot project is certainly a, uh, a useful project. And the money will certainly be well spent, uh, depending on how far over it runs. And I suspect that it will. And we'll have to fill out to get more uh, on top of the 1.3. Uh, the, cut, the next question would become uh, a rep to replace title. It sounds like it is uh, the next priority, <laughs> thank you, Alice. Um, and so, the, the, the cost of that, possibly $10 million for the rep, which is going to re require bonding, and um, you know, the Gun Stock Area Commission will have to come back to the delegation at some future point. Uh, Look for that funding. Um, that's a big, big pile of money if you get into 10 million, and that's just one of the several projects which we have been lined up. This is where we ran into trouble in 2000. Um, there was a lot of debt and uh, a couple of bad snow years. So I just want to make sure that we are keeping that in mind. Um, as we go forward, whatever you know, delegation is here when they come looking for the bond, uh, that is not uh, lost to the, uh, the, the history. Sorry, we are in voting mode, so yeah. I can't exactly take a look on this. But uh, more of a discussion from the delegation. Uh, we're in the for a vote. So, let me reread the motion. Uh, you can, you can <laughs> so I'll reread it now so everyone's clear on what we're voting and, and then I can speak real quick. So, um, uh, motion is we appropriate up to $1.3 million of ARPA funds for the purposes of engineering and paving of the parking lot at Gunstock to be dispersed by the <clears throat> county commissioners upon receipt of invoices from the Gunstock Air Commission and a request for payment by the majority vote of the Gunstock Air Commission. So, that's the motion. Um, again, I think it's pretty clear that this project um, is needed. It's a problem that's being solved. These federal funds and no direct uh, county tax rate increase. Um, and I think it's appropriate. So I'd ask y'all to vote yes on the motion. Yeah. 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 Ye
Yes. Representative Bluefield. Yes. Representative Mackey. No. Representative O'Hara. No. Representative Poget. Yes. Representative Silver. Yes. Representative Terry. Yes. Representative Pumphrey. No. Mr. Chair. Yes. The motion passes ten to five. <laughs> And that will close the public hearing on the supplemental appropriate. All right, into your business. If you could bring my chicken scratch, you're welcome to it. All right, are we ready for the next order of business? A uh, motion right there. Uh, having appropriated a contingency fund to meet the cost of unanticipated expenses and as authorized by RSA 2415 Roman 2, we request that the executive committee authorize the expenditure of an additional $30,000 for payment to Cleveland Water and Gas for uh, legal services to those. So, um, point of discussion. Um, we have uh, a bill from the uh, water back, and uh, they capped their uh, services at fifty thousand dollars. I think the actual billing grant uh, a little over a thousand more than that. But because we were at the end of Process waiting for the Consulting Area Commission to finally withdraw their uh, suit. Uh, they you know, tax the uh, amount of six thousand dollars uh, ran over by. Uh, uh, the fact of the matter is, know uh, that uh, the county will uh, be seen and uh, we for the defense of the. Uh, Okay. Go ahead. Thank you. Question for the supervisors, real quick of the case. Why wasn't this cap implemented before now? Like, why wasn't the twenty thousand dollars cap implemented when that's what we passed? So the past the promotion for twenty thousand dollars was uh, twenty thousand dollars without further action. The motion is next. I made, a, I made a motion to and get to authorize the engagement of the firm to allocate us twenty thousand dollars for legal fees without the direction of delegation. Mr. Chair, um, did I miss? Did you specify in your motion uh, uh, the source of the funds? Uh, did you do legal or yes. line item or contingency or transfer from contingency to legal? Did you so the, spin that out, please? The delegation in budgeting every year, um, I think we've always uh, appropriated the contingency fund. And under RSA 2413, that 
the contingency fund is expendable by the executive committee. So instead of just taking this motion to the executive committee, which would be some might think uh, would not get the, the proper discussion that uh, folks want to hear, uh, I think it is best that the full delegation recommend to the executive committee to authorize the expenditure. Thank you. Further discussion? I just have more questions on the end of before we even motion to pay for it. Thank you. Um, when I was going over the invoicing, there's over seven thousand dollars related to recovering the attorney fees from the commissioners. If the chairman requested now to get the money from Dunstock already at their meeting, why did we spend seven thousand dollars in trying to get the money from the county commissioners? Seven thousand six dollars. I added up for you. I think the, the timing on that is probably. We spent seven thousand six dollars in attorney fees to recover costs from the county commissioners. Why did we spend that money for any other than done something? Well, we're not. So currently, uh, there has been a request by myself to the Dunstock uh, Area Commission for reimbursement for the expenses. My next motion uh, down the line is to have a request from the full delegation to. Can I follow up to you on that? How is it appropriate that three three of the people that we just appointed throughout this legal process votes on paying this bill for us? Well, I would say that the three commissioners, three out of five commissioners that voted for that suit had a personal interest in driving that suit. That was clearly contrary to. RSA, uh, excuse me, Chapter Law 399 That's the assumption of the chair, not the whole delegation, though. Hmm? That's your assumption, not the whole delegation to answer to what happened. You're saying that it's appropriate for these three commissioners to vote on paying this bill, even though they were appointed while this lawsuit was going on. And there's actual physical motions in here about removal of Gunstock commissioners. There's the, the chairman of the Gunstock County Commission talking to our lawyer in here. How is that appropriate at all that we that we asked them then to pay for our bill? When there are we went over the bill budget. You guys went over the budget without asking us. And now you want to pass the dollar on to the Gunstock Commission rather than handling it here when it should have been done with $20,000. We should have paid them $23,000 less in your waste. So, Representative O'Hara, you're off point of the motion. The motion no, I'm not. I've already asked the Secretary if I was going to be on point. The, the motion is to request of the executive committee to pay $30,000 to the law firm. 30 percent It's a 30000 I think we need to pay 20 so it's about 30,000 yeah. the 20. That's my whole point of this. We're trying to extort the three people you guys appointed. There's no extortion. They were appointed by the state. What percent of the boards? You may not be recognized. You have something to say. Okay. We are discussing the motion. Mr. Chair, I can't support this motion. The reason I can't support this motion is in my read of, of the bill, I still have some questions about the invoicing, about the $7,000 to reimburse, which if I remember the specific uh, motion that was made, it was about the defense of gun stock. We were defending ourselves against gun stock, not acting in, a, in, a, in an offense position of not trying to reclaim money. And so I, I, I'm not sure, you know, I, I think I read somewhere there was 80 some odd emails exchanged between yourself, um, Representative Silver, and for some reason, the Representative, uh, the Commissioner Ness, which I really don't understand why Commissioner Ness is talking directly to our attorney without his attorney um, and how that works and why we expended money to have him talk to our attorney. So I guess my concern is that absent um, uh, a motion to have a limited release of all the emails to the delegation members, we can understand what all that back and forth was discussing so we know what the bill is for. Right now, we just have a simple line that says email from Noam Silver to, uh, to the attorney. 
and then the attorney spends eight hours doing something based on that email that we have no idea what it's about. And so I don't know how we can legitimately authorize the payment of something that we have no idea the underlying. So absent a limited release of emails to, uh, of all the emails that, that are in there by the attorney law firm um, to the delegation members so we can know what we're voting on. I don't know how we vote for 30 grand over a budgeted amount um, and have no idea what the money was actually spent. So I'm bored. Okay, so I'm looking at some of these numbers here, and I see a large sum of money going towards the removal of Gary Kadesh. That was not part of what we authorized. The total was over $5,000 pertaining to the removal of Gary Kadesh. And then I see a bunch of charges for objections to in-person hearings, where we're the same delegation that said we weren't gonna do Zoom meetings and such, but now we're objecting to doing in-person meetings in the court system, there's no way I will vote for this. What happens with the bill if the vote here tonight says that it's not going to be paid? I would assume that the law firm will sue us. Which is just going to end up costing a lot more than the 30000 that we're asking to do. So with it. Uh, any any further before we go to Representative uh, for a second, Representative Mackey? Uh, I agree that we should see the uh, emails. I'm sure the law firm will be willing to wait a little while so that the delegations come forward with paint bill. They're not going to sue us over that. It may <coughs> in the future, depending upon what comes out of the emails. But I think it's um, not fair for us to be asked to vote on something that we really do not know what it consists of. So I would like to see those emails also before I go forward. Right. He's good. Got me. Thank you. Good. <laughs> Any further discussion on the motion? So, Mr. Chair, again, I'm not opposed to Representative Bluefield paying the bill. I'm opposed to his paying the bill before I know what I'm paying the bill for. Right. So that's more my issue. It's not that I'm opposed to the idea, but we have no idea, and especially based on some of the some of the language that's in that bill doesn't seem to meet the criteria for what we approved the hiring of the attorney for. Um, again, if, if Representative Boards is correct and it's five thousand dollars worth of conversation about the removal of uh, Commissioner Kadash, that wasn't discussed. We were discussing defending ourselves from what they were doing, not taking offensive action to try to figure out how to remove somebody. So again, that would be outside the scope of even our original $20,000 request for funds. And so, but we don't know that because all we have is this little line that says removal of Gary Kadesh. We don't know what the, and it's from an email that was sent by either Representative Silver or Representative Sylvia to the attorneys. I can't pay for something that we didn't authorize. We didn't authorize an offensive action against the Comstock Air Commission. We, have, we authorized a defensive action to respond to their suit in a defensive manner to answer answer them to, to be uh, to be responsive. So again, absent the limited release of the emails to the county delegation so that we can know what was being asked of them, what the thousands of dollars were being spent on, how can we reasonably vote yes to authorize thirty thousand dollars to be spent from the contingency bank? I I completely understand what you're saying. Um, I just hate to see where we're going to be with getting sued over what transpires <coughs> and we're currently asking for an appropriation of 30 that it could very well be another 50 or more. Never should more than 20 to begin with. Yes, I, I, I would just hate to see it now. Um, just assume for argument's sake that uh, some of this, this uh, expenditures is not for something that was within the scope. What happens with that? So, the lawsuit by the Gun Secretary Commission against the delegation sought to enjoin delegation from the removal of Gunstock Commissioners Kaidash, Gallagher, and Blair. Anything dealing with 
the removal of any of those people was directly related to the subject matter of the lawsuit. So I believe that they were that all of that time might be extended and, and described as relating to the possible removal of Kaidash because Kaidash was seeking through the, through the lawsuit to enjoin the convention from removing him. So it's all it was all related. It's all part of the same. That that really doesn't answer my question. I want to know what happened. I want to know what happened. That something in there was not within the scope that was originally planned. Let's say there's five grand that doesn't fall within those guidelines. What happens to that? And I'm not saying that specific to them. I'm just saying anything. What happens to that? Who pays that? I guess there's more people trouble. Uh, Mr. Chair, it seems as though we have two uh, related and intertwined issues here. One is the payment of a bill. And the other is, what are we paying for? Uh, because there are questions being raised about certain conversations and subject matter covered in those conversations and whether it's appropriate or not. Seems to me that in the final analysis, we're going to end up having to pay this bill. Um, we can't say to the law firm, we're not going to pay you unless we're going to say to the members of the delegation, we're not going to pay it, you have to pay it. Now, that, that'll, that'll, that'll be interesting, uh, as well as embarrassing. So because the expenses have been incurred, it seems to me that we ought to fulfill our obligation uh, to, to pay the bill. And then if this delegation is of the mind that it wants to conduct an in-depth forensic investigation of all of the emails, all of, I see your hand, thank you. You know, we I, I was, used I was to say that evangelistic rallies too, it's list. distracting. So um, if you want to conduct an investigation, post-mortem to paying the bill, I'm, I'm not, I, I don't object to that, but I think we need to clear the decks here and pay the bill. Representative, uh, your first round, Representative Howard. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, in answer to Harry's question, he's talking about parameters. Uh, in the legal system, parameters are a real big thing. And sometimes the best defense is an honor. And I'm sure that these attorneys are defending us. Use some offensive maneuvers. Uh, there's questions about uh, Commissioner Ness communicating, and I don't know if that was just an email that Ness sent out that was sent to the attorneys for their review, or if Ness sent it directly. I have no idea. But it's pertinent to the case because Ness was the first one that the commissioner tried to get rid of, and he voted against. Who lost against the delegates. So he's a friendly witness. I guess, but I call it a friendly witness. Defense, but, um, I have to agree with Terry also, uh, Terry, that no matter how this plays out, we still owe the law firm, unless we can prove the law firm was trying to pull a fast one on us, no charges. So that would be the next. I would say the next moment to ver make them verify all their charges. So you're very bored some of that. I think before we approve any more spending at all, we need to dig deeper into what this went to. I mean, I'm looking at several things here. Evaluate Gallagher resignation. What did that have to do with our quote unquote defense? Um, all this Gary Kadesh stuff. I mean, if we spent $30,000 over the allocated funds, it's unacceptable. This should have been stopped a long time ago. And there's no way I can authorize this without seeing those specific emails that went on between Representative Silver and Sylvia with the attorney, as well as Commissioner Ness. That's all I have to say. So, whatever. Can I uh, just like, it's probably two or three questions real quick. Um, who was receiving our invoices for us? Was it the county or was it a representative of the delegation? 
To so one of the two factors. Sorry. Okay. All of that, okay. Why did we not receive a December invoice when we received every other month? Don't know. What the could it oh, could it conveniently be that it's twenty six thousand dollars over the twenty thousand dollars we budgeted? Because it equaled out the twenty six thousand dollars at the end of December. We wouldn't know we're over budget at the end of December. Where were the invoices sent? To Norm Silver, he just said. Yeah. Right there. Shouldn't they have been sent to the Mr. county commission? Mr. Chair? Should have been, no. Like the normal, directly. Okay. Mr. Chair? No, I just wish you had an extra. All right. So again, I, I, I want to be careful, not, not that we're mixing apples and oranges. We're, we're, we're talking about taking a vote to expend an appropriation to expend funds. It's our fiduciary responsibility to make sure that the funds were expended appropriately. At this point, I don't know any single one of us could, with the exception of those two who, who are subject to most of the emails, um, would know whether this was a valid or invalid. We have no idea. What the funds were actually, what was being talked about, or anything else. We have, we haven't done our due diligence to see what the funding was for. So, again, absent, I can't support a motion to, to, to pay the funds. I know ultimately we're going to pay it. We have to. I, I agree with Representative uh, Bean. We're ultimately going to have to pay this. But I don't think a, a 30 or 60 day delay in payment is going to result in a lawsuit um, by any stretch, knowing how. how and I'm sure Representative Lee knows our dining messages and how, how uh, uh, payment goes. Uh, we've already given them 20 grand. We've already written that check. They've gotten 40% uh, of their funds. It's the remaining 60%. And that's above and beyond our appropriation that we made. And so if we're going to extend beyond, we were willing to give carte blanche for the first 20, but I think the next 30, which were, which were expended without approval, needs to have a review of, of a, a review and, and i cannot vote for this if i have not done my fiduciary responsibility of seeing what that thirty thousand dollars was actually spent on and not just a line that says email seven thousand dollars respond to email research seven thousand dollars i want to see what the email is asking about i want to see what it was for so that i know that the funds were done appropriately that's how i do my due diligence and my my fiscal responsibility. We were just talking about the fact that we didn't want to spend money because we didn't have a budget and they didn't present a budget. And yet here we're going to expend money and we have no detail on any of how the money was spent. So uh, I can't support it. I'm asking a legitimate question. Is it going to cost more money to answer these questions? From the attorney, you know, that he's going to spend four or five hours laying this all out for us and charge us 400 bucks an hour or is that i just want printed copies of the email that should yeah. that, that should yeah, that's a legitimate question i don't know and these two could do it themselves yeah if they want yeah, to take it forward yeah. further discussion all right i will ask the clerk to close the roll yeah, yeah, the yeah we need the motion is, is yeah. the motion to allow the executive to expend thirty thousand dollars to make the defense lines to the community elders have an appropriated the contingency funds to meet the cost of unanticipated expenses and as authorized by RSA 2413 Roman 2, we request that the executive committee authorize the expenditure of an additional $30,000 for payment to Cleveland Water Bath PA for legal services delivery. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late for comment, right? Yeah. 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 Representative The conflict of interest. Can we vote on something that affects my vote on the executive committee? It's <laughs> a good question. Uh, I don't think right. so. You could declare it and, and yeah, vote. declare and vote, but we're not going to vote against the other bills. You can declare and vote, declare and not vote. Yes, sir. Representative Aldrich. Yes. Representative Dean. Nope. Representative Boards. No. Representative Harvey William. No. 
Huff? Yes. Significant concern 
to the counsel for the one stop area commission in the suit to have suggested to try to agree to preclude a claim of frivolous lawsuit. If they didn't think it was a possible claim, they would not have suggested that. I'm looking more. Representative Boards and Representative O'Hara. So everything Representative Silver just said is hearsay. Do we have any proof or evidence that what you just stated is factual? We have no emails between you and there. Representative Boards, are you going to sit here and call Representative Silver a liar? No, I mean, I did not use those words. Said I, I said it's hearsay. It's completely different than calling somebody. You need not imply that. No, I wasn't Representative O'Hara. I'm just confused on. I get that that was the motion that was made with their attorney. But that was after we've already put three people on the Nunsaw Commission board. That was in the middle of this loss. Was that lawsuit not dropped after we put the three people on the board? Two others. Two other three. Two other three. Two other three. Yeah. It was before, before Commissioner uh, Lambert. So how's that not a conflict asking to pay for this? It's the three people we appointed to ask. What do you suggest? Well, let's understand that there are really a couple of entities in discussion. There is the commission, and there are members of the commission. So we are asking the commission, made up of different people now, yes, it wasn't that way by our design. Represent, uh, Commissioner Gallagher resigned on his own, and Representative uh, Commissioner McClear had Unfortunately, it uh, extended beyond his uh, term. Uh, part of the if they don't like it, they can say no. Yes, again. Thank you. Thank you. I would just like to underscore the statement made by Representative Harvey Bolia. This is a request for reimbursement to the Gunstock Area Commission. If they choose to reimburse all or part of it, they may choose to do so. And if they choose, not to do so, and they don't. It's a request, it's not a directive to them. Representative Littlefield. So <clears throat> just for my own understanding, um, we're the body that puts people in or takes people out of the GAC commission, correct? Correct. So I think where the word frivolous comes from is the fact that they took suit trying to keep us from uh, removing any one of the three or all three, which is our job. And correct me if I'm wrong, we don't even have to have cause in order to do so. We have to have just cause. Yeah, okay. so there has to be a just cause. Okay. So just I, I want to make a point of order is that Rep. Howard, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. Um, if you remember, we had a meeting, um, a, a caucus meeting, and, and we discussed it with great confidentiality because you're because it was released already. Was Representative Sylvia presented a charging document that Representative Silver put together on the removal of three commissioners, and that was forwarded to the commissioners for their response. So it left caucus. So remember that even though we might we just we even had a date set, which ultimately we didn't we didn't hold, but there was a November 16th date set to have a hearing on the removal of three commissioners. So the response of that lawsuit is a direct response to that document, which was a charging document. That's what it was defined as a charging document against three commissioners, including a, an allegation of, of criminal misconduct. So again, I want to be careful when about malfeasance or, 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 or frivolous lawsuit, right? In that these commissioners, again, they were acting as a board with a majority vote, 
um, voted to defend themselves from, a, from an attack by, by what they perceived as an attack by <coughs> members of this, of this delegation. And so, I, again, it's not a frivolous action, right? They had literally criminal actions were, 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 it, were described in, in, the, uh, in the charging document. Uh, put forward by Representative Silver and Sylvia. Um, so I, I want to be careful. You know, we talk about, you know, just Representative Sylvia just said, just made a, a, a really stuck to me was he said that the three commissioners had a conflict of interest in, um, in voting for that. And yet we just took a vote to pay for a bill that was beyond our approved and appropriate amount in violation of law. And the two people who ran the bill up voted on it. There was, direct probably there, was conflict of violation. So, there was no violation of law. <laughs> there was a conflict of interest. <laughs> there was a conflict of interest. Representative yeah. Terry. Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd like to move the question. If it's seconded, it is non debatable, and we must immediately move to a vote on the motion. All the questions. The, the question before the body is it has to be, we have to vote on calling the question before we vote on the motion. Correct. So we are voting on calling the question. And the debate. By Aldridge. Please do a show of hands. Yes. Uh, all those in favor of uh, calling the question. The question. All those opposed. Motion carries. The question before the body is the motion by Sylvia and seconded by Aldrich. You want me to read the motion again? Please. <laughs> I think we should have a silver screen. So, uh, so the, the motion in short form is to request of the Gunstock Area Commission uh, reimbursement of $50,000 for the work expenses. Uh, the clerk will. Oh, well. Okay, Representative Howard. Yes. Representative Aldrich. Yes. Representative Dean. Yes. Representative Boards. No. Representative Harvey Julio. Yes. Representative Huff. Yes. Representative Mackey. Yes. Mr. Boyer? No. Representative Poget? Yes. Mr. Silver? Yes. Representative Terry? Yes. Mr. Comtois? Yes, Mr. Chair? Yes. Well, three motion passes. Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Mr. Chair? Next on the agenda. Mr. Chairman, I'm sure. That was the last thing on the agenda. Oh, no, I'm sorry. We added more. Sorry. We, we had His petition. There are no more motions. His petition. We added. We have these two items of business, and then that's it. No, we added his petition yeah. before. Gunstock pledge and Belknap. We petition. added his petition before we approved the no. agenda. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Ch Mr. Chair. I'm agreeing. We have two items of business, so um, I'm wondering uh, if, if Representative Harris' motion is something other than to no. do with the Gunstock pledge. Uh, is he recognized as the one to speak to the Gunstock pledge? Or are you in charge of this item on the agenda? Who's in charge of this item on the agenda? Aren't you? Currently, there is an agenda item. Gunstock pledge. He added. So isn't Representative Bean to be recognized next and not Representative Harris? That's what we're talking about. There can be no motion. Holy You can't have a motion. It's Representative Bean who's recognized. I know. That's not all I was saying. Can we stop now? Well, you're not the chairman. I know. I was trying to make a motion. He said, "Represent me." And I he said, "Doesn't okay. need your help." Oh, oh. come on! Represent me. You recognize this is out of control. Unacceptable. This is, this is unbelievable. This is unacceptable. This is all right, all right. Let's uh, be in order. Represent me. Okay. I, um, the last several months have been a lot of uh, accusations about about uh, the delegation wanting to. Uh, privatized gun stock and I was trying to find a way where I could uh, let the people know that I am not for privatizing gun stock.
So I, uh, I took the, the, the governor's pledge there for no uh, income tax or sales tax. I modified that and I was going to sign that. I'll read that in a second, but after, after I read it, after I wrote it and looked it over and, and signed it, I said, I bet there's other people on the delegation that would also want to sign this. So uh, the pledge that I came up with is as follows. This pledge is my promise never to vote for privatization by way of selling or leasing any portion of gun, of gun stock ski area in the town of Guilford of Belknap County as long as I hold elected office in New Hampshire. So I signed that and I went around and I asked everyone in the delegation if they was interested in signing it. I made certain to them that uh, I wasn't bending their arm or anything to try to get them to sign it. I just wanted to know their true feelings. And out of the 18, I got 17 signatures. And I want the general public to be aware of that, that the, de the delegation is pretty much against privatization and all of the all of the talk that was going on, we we'll call it talk, that was going on for months to that effect. That's all I, I have the list of, I have the, the signatures on this document right here. And um, I guess it's not anybody's but mine, but somebody yeah. wants to look at it. Move that uh, the uh, the pledge be entered into the record of this meeting. Second. Moved and seconded. Discussion. Uh, Representative Kerry first. Uh, I have nothing further to say other than I think it'd be a good idea to do that. Representative Howard and then Representative Jose. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd just like to say the uh, the pledge is a great idea, and I think sign it. But it's like. Uh, you know, um, agreeing to make sure all my room is yellow. Uh, we can't sell gun stock. We could lease it if you were lucky enough to find someone to take a lease on it, I suppose. But we probably have to lease it for a dollar a year. So that's all I have to say about it. Thank you. Representative Howard posted it so late for me that we could not sell it. Probably not even lease it. We want to. Uh, and one other thing is if all of us could have another opportunity to either put our name on or remove it before it goes into record. So we have that opportunity. Thank you. Um, Representative Lang. So, Harry, uh, Representative Bean, I had a really good conversation about this. And and I, I signed it because I, I, I wholly don't support the idea of privatizing ski operations of, uh, of the mountain at all. However, I also gave him a little caveat in that I wouldn't be opposed to the idea of if it made financial sense and it came before the board, uh, it would have to come before us because it would be a real estate transaction. If we wanted to release the land for the purposes of a hotel, I don't, I want to be clear, I don't consider that a violation of that of that uh, uh, option. Uh, I am opposed to the to uh, a, a corporation coming in and running the ski operation and doing a gun stock air conditioning. However, I'm not opposed to the idea, and we already do it to a certain extent. We outsource our food and beverage, if I'm not mistaken, don't we? Um, no, to, uh, no, 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 not anymore. Not anymore. We have in the past outsourced our food and beverage where it made sense. Um, at the time. So um, there may be occasions where pieces and parts of gun stock are privatized because it makes the most amount of sense. And by signing that pledge, I want to be clear that I'm not opposing those kind of limited, like in the case of a hotel, if they can put, take 10 acres and drop, and they think there's a, a, a good financial return on investment to lease that 10 acres to a corporation to put a, a slope side ski hotel, and that's going to benefit the town. Uh, Guilford, because that would be a, it's a $30 million hotel. That's a $30 million hotel that now would go on the tax rolls for the town of Guilford and pay county taxes, education taxes, and, and town taxes. And I wouldn't want to preclude that from happening as long as it went through the right process and if it made sense. And if because it would be a lease, just like we signed the courthouse leases, it would be, it would come before us. And I want to make sure we're clear that that wouldn't necessarily stop us from moving forward on that action and going forward. So I think that's an important piece of the mountain as it grows, um, that could be a potential. 
and I don't want to lock that. But if you, if the if Harry's idea behind of having Vail or some large corporation can take over, wholly take over the entire area, and especially the ski operations of the area, I highly oppose that. I, that's the reason why I signed that document. Board. I'm actually on board with everything Representative Lang said. I do want to make it clear that part of the reason I signed that is I've seen time and time again where a county or a city or a state leases a ski operation. They have three bad winters, they claim bankruptcy, and the county, city, or state are left with nothing but an empty ski mountain. So I think that pledge makes perfect sense, but I agree with Representative Lang if they want to put a hotel there and it makes financial sense to lease out the property for a hotel, I'm for that. Thank you. Representative, uh, sorry, Representative Bean. Okay, I, I did this just to ease the minds of the, uh, there's a few or maybe not so few, People that thought that there was a possibility of some grand conspiracy <laughs> uh, because it, it got almost to that point for the, some of the people that, that I heard talking about. So that, that's the only reason I did this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Since we're all purging our souls over the reason <laughs> that I signed this, I feel the need to also. Um, it, in the climate that we've been in over the last year, it's become very, very apparent that facts don't seem to much matter to public opinion through the help of the media. And I signed this pledge because at no time was any time ever discussed a privatization here. Nobody's ever had on their brain. It's all been a made up thing just to make some angst here. So I signed it because we still don't have any plan to do any of that. So hopefully uh, this will get trumpeted in the town square as much as the other uh, stuff was. Thank you. Uh, we've got Representative Well, I, I was hit pretty hard that uh, called uh, calling me out as a free stater and not tell me what I'm doing and. I signed this because I have no plans of leasing this thing out. I don't think any hotel is going to be profitable for us. So you guys are all welcome to your opinion, but I'm a firm no when I signed that thing. That's all I got to say. Secretary. Yes. Um, <clears throat> that we not forget that the, the, the motion is to, to place this document in the record. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but since we've wandered a little bit of field on the subject, I just wanted to, to add that um, in signing this document, I understand, and I think I'm really on very solid ground, as well as others of you who are making the point, that to privatize, this means to, this involves a transfer of ownership. And, and we have no intention whatsoever of proceeding down the road of advocating for a transfer of ownership of gun stock or any portion thereof. No, privatized does not mean lease. It means to sell and to transfer ownership. That's the pledge that I signed. To not privatize, to not sell, to not transfer ownership of this wonderful public asset that we love. Thank you. Uh, so this is getting a little late, so um, I, I'll just give my very brief comment on gun stock. If you could gift it to Guilford, I would be happy to do it because I really don't want control. Uh, <laughs> what discussion or shall on the motion? Call the vote. No, don't call it. 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 All those in favor, raise your hands. You opposed? It's unanimous. Amazing. Motion to adjourn. No, I'm not going to say yeah, yeah. one more thing. <laughs> adjourn <laughs> anyway. So, um, I'm there, man. I just, this, this was handed out to us for the petition, and I, I it was on, it's in, on everyone, in everyone's packet. I, I, I issue with it myself. And that I don't think that elect that represent silver and silver are elected county officers, and therefore it's it's a non committee kind of action. Um, that being said, um, and I'm not sure. Uh, 
under this, I am going to make a motion. And my motion is relative to this and relative to the two other items we had on our um, on our agenda. And the motion is that we have um, we waive privilege and have a limited release of emails for the county delegation members to be able to review what was sent relative to the legal bill. Second. Second by O'Hara. Second yeah. So limited meaning that's only we're only releasing for the purpose of the delegation members to review to know what we just spent fifty thousand dollars on, and then it's it's not a general public release of of privilege. Question, uh, Representative Lang, uh, when you say release, would you please describe operationally what that means? Do you mean that we would all receive copies personally, or we would be able to view in camera, or what? Uh, my intention by the motion is that we'd always see copies that we could read just like we did the unredacted uh, Further discussion? Okay. Uh, yeah, my second behind this is just for transparency reasons. We've already now allotted another $30,000 taxpayer money to go towards this. They should, we should at least know what we allot their money for and then see if it's something they should, I think they should already know. We shouldn't have to yeah, review it first, but I'll go with the process of us reviewing it first. But I think they should know what they paid for. Representative Silver. Uh, I think that with the uh, whatever waiver of the attorney client privilege to provide the uh, emails to the delegation members, we would subject all of those to a right to know under 91A. Indeed. And uh, mm -hmm. oh, sorry. I said that by waiving the attorney client privilege even on a limited basis to provide the emails between counsel and the rest of Sylvia and myself uh, dealing with this particular legal matter, which is covered by the attorney-client privilege. Once those are released to the delegation, <coughs> they will be subject to disclosure to the public under 91A. Response? Representative Lang. I guess it's a question. Isn't the, aren't the delegation the, um, the clients in this case? So, not you and Representative Sylvia. The, so the entire delegation are, we're not really waiving, we're just waiving, we want to see the end emails. So we are the client, yeah. so we're not waiving liability, we're not even waiving privilege because we're the, we're the named parties. If I may? Yeah. Uh, so Representative uh, Silver has used the term uh, control group, and some people think that's some sort of nefarious, uh, we're in control of uh, everybody around here. Uh, when he uses that term, it is a legal term and it has to do with the attorney client privilege, such that we interacted, uh, Representative Silver and I, being the control group, interacted with the lawyers. Um, and that way, we're not sharing all of that. If we share it with folks, if we had shared it with folks along the way, that would be uh, breaking the term client privilege, and that's the way that he uses that term. So I just wanted to clarify that it's not a nefarious and legal principle for attorney client privilege. But again, Mr. Chair, aren't in, in theory all the delegation was the one that was sued, which is all of us, which makes us all party to the lawsuit, which makes us all subject to the same confidentiality agreements we, with the attorneys. And we should have the right to review those documents. I'm making the motion because apparently there's been some pushback. And so we'll make it clear that the delegation members want to review those emails to make sure what we just spent, again, doing our fiduciary responsibility, what we just spent 50 grand on. So I think it's still subject to attorney private privilege with the client. Former Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, New Hampshire Justice Lynn set forth the control group test for attorney-client privilege. And he talked in a, in a specific case in 2007, uh, those top management persons who have the responsibility of making final decisions and those employees whose advisory roles to top management are such that a decision would not normally be made without those persons' advice or opinion, or whose opinions in fact form the basis for any final decisions. If you confine the communication between counsel and the control group, it retains the attorney-client privilege and is not subject to 91A. Once you go outside the control group, 
even whether it's other named parties involved in litigation, you lose the privilege of the attorney client privilege and it becomes subject to that. And I have the article, a very good article by the a different law firm, the Bernstein Shore Sawyer Nelson firm, 2020, attorney client privilege and the work product doctrine in the corporate context. I'd be happy to give this to the clerk to put in the record. Just a chair, one last again, response to, to so again, if I if I'm not mistaken, this this case is done, and not only is it done, it's done with prejudice, so it can't be brought back. Um, and so, therefore, even if we were, uh, and I, I made the limited motion because I felt it was it was the cleanest way to make this happen. But even if we did release it to the public, why are we blocking transparency on a case that can never come back again? That there doesn't doesn't have any impact on us. They can't we can't get sued again for what's in the emails, other than if we probably try to hide it. Um, but I, again, I don't see in a case that has no chance of coming back because it was dismissed with prejudice, meaning it cannot be brought back. Why, at least for the purposes of our delegation, which are all named in the, in the suit, um, that we cannot review and do our fiduciary responsibility. And I understand we have competing um, responsibilities here, but again, I think transparency to the taxpayer is the most important piece of this. And the secondary right behind it is our fiduciary responsibility. So again, I think that this motion is appropriate that it doesn't, that we have every right to see the emails. And we should not be hiding them. Yeah. I represent O'Hara, then Representative Thank you. Um, I just want to clarify, when did we vote for, the, the, when did the delegation vote for you two in the control group of our lawsuit? We didn't. We didn't. So yeah. how does this then assert any claim privilege? Does so, we never vote for you guys to be the control group? The, the alternative to uh, our actions would be to have delegation meetings, uh, full delegation meetings with the attorney and have uh, extraordinary expense. Um, this this was a proper logistical way to handle and that, that was not my, I get I get the point of that, but my point was we never even voted on the putting you two as the control group. We could have made that vote and never met again, and we've never had this discussion. Yep. But we're you're you're inclining that we us all 18 members put our full faith in two people that were named in the suits, and now we're not gonna see the emails. I'm oh, oh, sorry, we're all named suits, so we should all see it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the suit was brought to defendants, there was one defendant in the suit. It was the Belknap County Convention. The individual members of the convention were not named as parties or defendants in the suit. So that doesn't, that, that doesn't answer the, the question. The control group. Who voted for you to be the control group? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, my question um, it would probably be handled by uh, Representative Silver. When you say um, open to 91A, does that mean in regards to what we are discussing, or does that mean somebody could find my arguments with my wife on my phone over what kind of paint we're getting for the house? <laughs> it's not funny. If you, release, if you want to put in the record your discussion with your wife over paint and it becomes part of the public record, then it's subject to 91A. Okay, thank you. So, Oh, is there any way oh, that we could oh, have God. a meeting with the lawyer uh, within attorney client privilege and just, I mean, I've had these with planning boards where we just have a lawyer, it's not public, that's a possibility. We could, and it would cost more money. money. Yeah. So let, let me uh, address one of the issues that Representative Lang brought. Uh, he says that the suit is over and it's done and there's no harm to be done in uh, releasing these emails. And there's nothing nefarious being hidden, but the fact of the matter is that there are people with uh, significant resources that would like to take little pieces and parts of that and develop that into a suit. And that would Let's say that the, the suit would be 
uh, against the delegation and the members individually. In that case, let's say that uh, certain party with a lot of money decides to sue Representative Sylvia because of uh, something he said in one of these uh, emails. Uh, there is a RSA 99D, which would involve bringing in the Attorney General to defend Representative Sylvia. So we're talking about possibly very extensive litigation over something that is nothing. So that is the reason that this stuff is not just thrown out there in the public. Representative Orts. I like to go back to what Representative O'Hara said. We haven't gotten a clear answer to this. Who appointed Representative Silver and Representative Sylvia as this control group? The lawyers. The lawyers? The lawyers. So if none of us got to speak to the attorneys, but the lawyers appointed you and you. That does not make sense. Uh, so let me, let me just take a second to describe the process in which we came to acquire the attorney. So when we were sued, uh, Representative Silver took it upon himself to, being a lawyer, research law firms that would be able to defend us. And he went to the trouble of actually going out and finding some law firm that did not have a conflict with a board of 18 members. That's a, a bit of a challenge, I'll, I'll say. I know that the county commissioners have uh, hired a law firm, and one of the commissioners had to recuse himself for a conflict. So, Representative Silver being the primary contact, and myself being the chairman, it was a natural uh, control group. So, that's never what that. you get from that. Never Representative uh, Howard. I was, was kind of sorry. I what I was going to say. Just one that when you get it, we did all vote for you. Uh, to be chairman of this delegation. So that, that gives you the authority to appoint the control group. So, Representative Lang, would you uh, like the last word on your motion? Sure. Again, I, I think this is an issue of transparency. This is an issue of uh, fiduciary responsibility. Um, uh, the motion is to release the emails to the delegation members so that we can appropriately review the $50,000 expenditure that we made um, and to make sure that we're comfortable with it and that we're not, uh, again, doing our job is what we're elected to do is to make sure that county money is spent in the best way for the taxpayer. And currently we don't have the ability to do that on this, in this uh, absent reading what the emails were uh, in full transparency. So uh, again, I think it's an appropriate motion, both for transparency and judiciary responsibility to vote in favor of releasing. Okay, we have uh, concluded discussion and we'll go to the vote. Uh, roll call, Mr. Chair. So I will uh, ask the chair the clerk to call the roll. Motion is to release. The motion is to release the emails. Yeah, one of the Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 No. Representative Lang. Yes. Representative Field. No. Mr. He left. Mr. Silver. No. Mr. Terry. No. Mr. Terry. No. Mr. Chair. No. no. Uh, Mr. Chairman, agenda. We are point of order. I, our representatives are leaving. Continue to talk under their breath and inappropriately interrupt this over and over and over again. And I would just like to point that out and have perhaps an admonishment 
even though it's post departe. Thank you. I, I did not hear a motion. I would move to adjourn. Uh, it's not no, under Robert. We are adjourned. You are adjourned. <laughs>